let's give you a sense now of uh, this uh, cyclone as it is progressing and making its way towards the Gujarat coastline. Already, of course, you're noticing that there are high wind speeds that are being faced uh, over there by the people who are on the ground. Of course, authorities have to do their job. They're on the ground already. But as far as, uh, you know, the cyclone is concerned, let's give you a sense of how the trajectory has been so far. So we're talking about the cyclone. As you can see, this is the area. It is already approaching. That's the eye of the storm, if I can tell you. That is the eye of the storm as far as the cyclone is concerned. It has been moving progressively over the last few days. Let's give you a sense of how it has been moving. So here's the trajectory as we're showing it to you. It starts from Sunday and it has moved all the way up and this is where the eye of the storm is at the moment. This is along the Gujarat coastline. As you can see, Dwarka is in the red over here. So expect it to be maximum impact as far as the cyclone is concerned. There's Jamnagar, Junagar, which are also bracing themselves. And this is Nalia. It's not very far from here where the eye of the storm is and it's expected to make landfall. This is the Gujarat coastline as you're looking at. The landfall is expected to be anywhere between Mandvi in Kutch in Gujarat and Karachi in Pakistan, which is over there. Let's give you a sense now of how it is moving. As you can see, this is how it's expected to move. That's the eye of the storm as it's moving right now. This is how it will keep progressing. So tomorrow, this is where it's expected to be in this area at about 11 a.m. in the morning. And now, then, of course, uh, by Saturday, by the 17th at about 11 a.m., Bilwara, Rajasthan. Remember, it will move into the Kutch area of uh, Rajasthan where the wind speed would have, in fact, come down Kota as it's crossing. And then, of course, uh, you know, it will bring down the wind speed and uh, it will, of course, weaken as far as uh, the cyclone is concerned. But this is, in fact, the trajectory. It is here, right about here, near Nalia at the moment in Gujarat. Ashutosh is joining us live. Ashutosh is joining us live from Mandwi in the Kutch region. Ashutosh, again, just to give us a sense of how the situation is on the ground right now. Anytime the cyclone is expected to make landfall, what is the situation on the ground at the moment, Ashutosh? And Pallavi, this would have probably happened as we speak because uh, we, have, we need an official update uh, from the Med Department. But by now, it would probably have a hit to the AP Center where it was expected to make a landfall. As far as the impact that we see, clearly since morning we are witnessing the impact and now it's gradually increasing. In fact, since morning the wind speed was on and off, uh, you know, reducing or increasing. But for last one hour, more than 60-70 minutes, we are seeing a constant velocity of the wind which is slightly every 10 to 15 minutes that's so that's of course you can see in these images even if i'll be barely audible uh, to you but somehow you know we try to bring out these ground reports and the images are from here from mandavi port of course the rain has stopped and since morning it has been uh, playing on and off but when the landfall takes place of course as the expert believe the since the speed uh, maximum expected is around 140 kmph and gradually it is shifting the directions by 10 km per hour so uh, you know uh, the ap center which is located around 130 km from uh, mandavi port uh, uh, radiously so it will take certain hours to hit the coastal line and at which the time could be potentially around 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock and that's exactly in less than a couple of hours there will be high tide season and that's the biggest concern for the uh, for the authorities for the India and for all the agencies who are in a mission to ensure safe maximum life safe maximum public assets so you already heard the maritime member uh, uh, who Kuldeep Singh who said the power risk assessment that was done and risk assessment was done in the basis of, uh, of uh, the high tide and of course the wind uh, speed because if that is hitting the uh, city what all infrastructure could probably be uh, impacted by that including the, uh, in the telecom um, uh, towers, mobile towers, electricity infrastructure, kacha houses and the rural areas which is located at the left side, you know, both sides of the street but most likely because the most uh, uh, the rural people, that, uh, the poor people, uh, the marginalized community from the fishermen community, those who have been living on the just other side. So where we have the maximum number of the kacha houses, those people probably would be at the receiving end of the cyclone worse. And also I can see 
some uh, communication towers. Though some certain arrangements were done, uh, this is shifting of these uh, towers cannot be just a uh, job for the couple of days. So, of course, as for now, only the risk assessment was done and post the activities because probably midnight while people will be really, uh, you know, sleeping, when they wake up early in the morning, they will potentially see the havoc caused by the cyclone. But for now, all you see, only when just bracing for the impact, all authorities are on standby. So far, we haven't heard about any major damage in the town. The ground report suggests that barely few uh, trees were uprooted by the wind speed, but it is just the beginning. This is merely uh, 70 or 80 kmph wind speed. This is going to be, while at the coastal is concerned, going to be up to 110, 120 kmph. In that case, literally make things terrible here in Mandvi or even the nearby uh, coastal areas. Follow me.